So there is a Axel Burkhardt on the internet kind of claiming when you die, you are in a state where your thoughts that you had during daytime come to your experience. Well, your mind is gone then, but your either body, sa he says, has this experience of experiencing all these thoughts you ever had during daytime at an instance. And then you go through your life, you see the meaning of your life. And that's why it's not good to cool down bodies once they've died. Well, this is all bullshit, because one thing we can say is that we are human beings and we have no idea what it's going to be like once we're dead. Because the ones that were near dead or had a experience of, like, uh, in hypnosis, going back. So, these all are human beings still being alive. So you cannot talk about if there is a cycle of life and death. You cannot talk about the death part of this cycle. And by the way, since the universe moves in a spiral, it's a forward moving, turning and expanding thing. So I came up with this one here. Because from a earth perspective we can only look at things if we really have a kind of a spiral happening then the creative thinking and feeling or survival realm is what we are in while we are at life then we go dying and then we don't know nothing about this whole thing because we are not having our present body at hand to remember or to take pictures with our eyes. So then we get born again and then maybe this one could be a life and death cycle. Okay, this one might be. So I asked myself, because we do not know anything about this whole realm down here, since we have not been there and stayed there, and then made a YouTube video, because then we would be there and not being able to do a YouTube video. So, because what we know is the universe moves forward and it's expanding and also spiraling, they maybe came up with this, you know, you die and you come back. But otherwise, nature does not really give us this idea. Because if you look at the plant, once it has bloomed and there will be fruits, apricots in this case, the one apricot that got to be, won't be, I eat it. It won't have to do anything with this tree after that anymore. So the bits and parts of energy, if that one exists, they're all torn apart by death. And even by life, because I renew myself in every moment of my life. So I'm <laughs> dying already. I'm dying a death of my cells. So I have, a, I have never seen the same cell coming back and being able to profit from the knowledge that it gained during the life it had with me as a cell the previous life. That one would be this example of a human being going to death and come back as him herself. Well, this idea probably we have to forget about. And then the other thing they say, he said, Axel Burkhardt, well, we get into this zone of mind mindfulness that's all in the cosmos once we uh, are giving away this ether body so after three days we will die another death and then we won't have anything to do with our flesh body then we leave this earth's realm altogether 
in this sense of being material. Well, that's just bogus. That's just a children's story. Maybe once you're on your deathbed, you know you're gonna die. You start thinking like this too. Maybe that's where all these stories stem from. You get kind of frightened. I'm not sure. I haven't been there. I just say, see that it's not logical to say, oh, you know, we're gonna come back. It just won't happen. <laughs> and also, I'm not into, oh yeah, now I'm gonna die, you know, once I'm on my deathbed and dying. Oh yeah, now, three days, I'll be an ether body, you know, thinking like this while I die. I will just drop myself from the experience of being dying and see myself what it's gonna be. I tell you. And also when people are fear-mongering like this Axel Borkart, he says, well, you now have to be really careful what thoughts you have during daytime, he says, <laughs> of your life. Because all these thoughts get to be in this mental body of the universe in the end. And they will say thank you, the mental universe you get into after you've been an ether body, he says, because of all the good thoughts and the helpful thoughts. So that's fear-mongering. That's like, ooh, now I'm going to be afraid of afterlife. Well, they say this is how our galaxy works. But if all they say about death is like so far out there, even that one might be wrong. They say on our galaxy we are in a far out arm of one of these arms, right? And then we are moving with this whole thing in one direction, but also spiraling and then also expanding. So that's what they say. And because here is our Earth's galaxy and then we have far out there another one. Andromeda. And by the way, even there, there is a so-called Ereignis Horizont. There's just some sort of a visual border where you can't get information from what's behind that line. So they say, so precession isn't quite happening on a flat thing. It's like a spiral. So you're always going to be one level up or la one level down, however you want to see it, because it happens in a 3D space. So we are turning around the sun, we are turning around us, and then we have these three movements. And they come up with numbers there from four to 800,000 kilometers a second. That would be the movement velocity of a human being on Earth. They don't even know for sure. So, yeah, if they don't know about the universe, stuff you can actually look at, but is, I, I admit, difficult to look at, how would they be able to come up with exact data about death you know it's a topic people are really interested in so that's maybe the reason why there are so many talkers but otherwise make up your own mind and give yourself your own direction like once I'm dying I go you know I'm breathing oh I'm still breathing nice I'm still alive <laughs> I'm like this and then okay I'm not breathing anymore where am I now you know, breathing has gone, so where am I now? I want to experience it for myself and not let it be ruined by all these models and religions that kind of tend to push me into a certain direction. Because we know religions are tools created for fools just to tax us to get additional taxes in for the government and then also to put us into place when a lot of time goes away for religions 
then you don't have any more left for politics. And also, they know where you're at. Like when they brainwash you once a week or whenever you read a book about your religion, they know where you're at. You're easily uh, profiled by that. So yeah, I'll end this by saying you cannot really say what will be after death. It's just very logical. Think about it. So, and maybe that's a good thing. So, we don't know what happens while we're asleep. And we sleep like a third of our lives is sleeping. So it seems to be something important. Maybe there is a life-death cycle. If there is not, then everything I've ever been is lost. And just the stuff that I produced will stay on earth. So good thing Michelangelo painted the Sixtina, because that one still is around. But he's done other stuff, like sculptures in stone that aren't around anymore. They got destroyed while he was still alive. So, yeah. Bye-bye.